Hello my people, what's good? Today I'm going to be reacting to opti Optimistic Nihilism. Um, this is by Kurgis Can't pronounce that in a nutshell. So it's your boy. Today I'm going to be reacting to Optimistic Nihilism. So yeah guys, let's get into this video. <coughs> that was cancerous. Let go thousand years ago we became conscious and found ourselves in a strange place it was filled with other beings we could eat some some could eat us word whoa is this that kind of video yeah cheese cheese mo mo you're crazy you know there was liquid stuff we could drink things we could use to make more things the daytime sky had a tiny yellow ball that warmed our skin the night sky was filled with beautiful lights this place was obviously made for us. Something was watching over us. We were home. This made everything much less scary and confusing. But the older we got, the more we learned about the world and ourselves. We learned that the twinkling lights are not shining beautifully for us, they just are. We learned that we're not at the center of what we now call the universe, and that it is much, much older than we thought. We learned that we're made of many little dead things, which make up bigger things that are not dead for some reason and that we're just another temporary stage in a history going back over a billion years. We learned, in all, that we live on a moist speck of dust moving around a medium-sized star in a quiet region of one arm of an average galaxy, which is part of a galaxy group that we will never leave. And this group is only one of thousands that together make up a galaxy supercluster. But even our supercluster is only one in thousands that make up what we call the observable universe. The universe might be a million times bigger, but we will never know. Oh. We could throw words around like 200 billion galaxies or trillions of stars or bazillions of planets, but all of these numbers mean nothing. Our brains can't comprehend these concepts. The universe is too big. There is too yeah. much of it. But size is not the most troubling concept we have to deal with. It's time, or more precisely, the time we have. Yeah, we never know when we're going to die. That's quite depressing, you know. Like, the only thing you're guaranteed in life is death. That's deep. That's what she said. But seriously, that's deep. If you're lucky enough to live to 100, you have 5,200 weeks at your disposal. If you're 25 now, then you have 3,900 weeks left. If you're going to die at 70, then there are 2,340 weeks left. A lot of time, but also not really. And then what? Your biological processes will break down and the dynamic pattern that is you will stop being dynamic. It will dissolve until there is no you left. Some believe that there is a part of us we can't see or measure, but we have no way to find out. So this life might be it and we might end up dead forever. Mm, you know, if you think about it that way, that's what makes people want to do all this crazy shit before they die, you understand? like because tomorrow is not promised and you can't physically see the soul you have inside you do you know what i'm saying i personally believe everyone has a soul but another person might look at it from a different perspective this is less scary than it sounds though if you don't remember the 13.75 billion years that went by before you existed then the trillions and trillions and trillions of years that come after will pass in no time once you're gone close your eyes count to one that's how one. long forever feels one and as far as we know in the end the universe itself will die and nothing will ever change again our videos induce existential dread in many people and the last few minutes probably haven't helped so for once we want to offer a different way of looking at these things not gonna lie that's just it's it's low-key just making me feel on edge it's, it's making me hate life at the moment to be honest an unscientific subjective point of view the philosophy of Kurzgesagt, if you want. Please take it with a grain of salt. We don't know any more about human existence than you do. We counter existential dread with optimistic nihilism. What do we mean by that? Well, to summarize, it seems very unlikely that 200 trillion trillion stars have been made for us. In a way, it feels like the cruelest joke in existence has been played on us. We became self-aware 
only to realize this story is not about us. While it is great to know about electrons and the powerhouse of the cell, science does To be honest, it is about us because we're the only beings who are commenting on these things and sharing this knowledge with each other. Do you think other animals are doing this? So technically, if you think about it, it was for us to know. It was for us to see. It was for us to all have our own perspective on it. I think the universe, not even the universe, planet Earth was built for humans. At this current stage of what's going on in the world now, it was built for humans. Doesn't do a lot to make this less depressing. Okay, but so what? You only get one shot at life, which is scary, but it also sets you free. If the universe ends in heat death, every humiliation you suffer in your life will be forgotten. Every mistake you made will not matter in the end. Every bad thing you did will be voided. If our life is all we get to experience, then it's the only thing that matters. If the universe has... I don't believe this life is the only life we get to experience, fam. Nah, bruh. There's, there's another side for sure. What do you guys think, yo? No principles. The only principles relevant to the ones we decide on. If the universe has no purpose, then we get to dictate what its purpose is. If the universe has no purpose, then we have no purpose. I can't look at it in the same way as this bread does. Humans will most certainly cease to exist at some point. But before we do, we get to explore ourselves and the world around us. We get to experience feelings. We get to experience food, books, sunrises, and being with each other. The fact that we're even able to think about these things is already kind of incredible. It's mm. easy to think of ourselves as separated from everything, but this is not true. We are as much the universe as a neutron star, or a black hole, or a nebula. Even better, actually, we are its thinking and feeling part, the sensory organs of the universe. We are truly free in a universe-sized playground. So we might as well aim to be happy and to build some kind of utopia in the stars. Yeah, let's build a utopia, guys. Let's stop arguing and fighting over petty little things and all live in peace and harmony and all be great friends despite everything. It's not as if we found out everything there is to know. We don't know why the rules of the universe are as they are how life came into existence, what life is. We have no idea what consciousness is or if we are alone in the universe, but we can try to find some answers. There are billions of stars to visit, diseases to cure. <laughs> well, they still ain't found the cure for AIDS. People to help, happy feelings to be experienced and video games to finish. There is so much to do. So wrapping up, you've probably used up a good chunk of the time available to you. If this yeah, I've used 20 whole years. I might even have one year left. You never know. This is our one shot at life. There is no reason not to have fun and live as happily as possible. Bonus points if you make the life of other people better. More bonus points if you help build a galactic human empire. Do the things that make you feel good. You get to decide whatever this means for you. Wow, that was pretty awesome. Anyways, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you so much for making it to the end. Really appreciate every single one of y'all. Y'all are cool as hell. Anyways, um, yeah, guys, thank you so much. You guys are the best. And um, yeah, so I don't really know what to say at this moment in time. Deuce. Oof, oof, oof.